Greetings, fellow nerds. Welcome to another MTG Nerdfell video. We are continuing our Kaldheim preparation. This will be week three. This will be our last week because Kaldheim will officially drop once we are done with these videos. So hopefully you've been enjoying kind of certain decks that we think are going to get better on um, building decks, even around singular cards um, to shake up the meta. So if you haven't seen those videos, go ahead, check it out. They're in the description down below. Um, you can check out the past few um, decks that we've been looking at to prepare for Kaldheim. Um, thank you all so much for your support. You know, if you're interested in seeing more stuff, if you're ready to see Kaldheim, um, I've already bought um, both packs so that I can open as many packs as possible and get the wild cards to really start taking off with creative decks. So if you're interested in seeing stuff like that, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the like button, you know, thumbs up and hit that alarm bell so you have an easier time finding me in the future. And on occasion, I'll talk about random stuff too, uh, like video games or board games just because I'm a giant nerd. So if you want to see extra content on the side, this is definitely the perfect channel for you. So we're trying to hit 200 subs before my birthday, and that's kind of the goal here, but we're just mid-February. But that being said, we're going to look at Mono White Aggro. We've made a couple changes just because we've seen so many of the cards from uh, White and Kaldheim. They have a lot of flying, so we took out um, the Brooding Moth. Uh, but still a great deck. White is still here to stay for standard. Um, hasn't been in standard for a while, I feel like, but now... Uh, you know, it's made its uh, mark ever since Throne of Eldraine, so uh, it's definitely here to stay for Kaldheim. So let me show you what we're working with now that we've made a couple of changes. We've got Selfless Savior, of course, for um, giving a creature indestructible. Sentinel's Eyes. I like this card because it's good against Mill. It gives you a little bit of something to play, and it's a great card, actually, in uh, equipping your uh, buffing your creatures. You got Daxos. I just like that he can be a good blocker. Glass Casket for the removal. Luminarc Aspirant, of course, a staple in uh, a lot of decks now. Seasoned Hollow Blade, also a staple in a lot of decks. Banishing Light for the removal, very, very important. Bosri Ket, love, I, I mean, I love Bosri Ket. If you've seen any of my past videos, including White, chances are I've thrown Bosri Ket in there just because he's that good. Then I'm trying out the Lava Bring Venture. Um, probably, you know, might be removed, but um, I actually really like this. This could be relevant. Um, a lot of decks don't. Um, always have a good split of odd and even then usually they're all in on one so this could actually uh this could actually do some work here and it's it's a three three so you know you're at least getting value we got mom skyclaves one of the best equipments skyclave apparition bosri's lieutenant four cast reveals 18 planes and two fabled passage um i really like the fact that we are um trying to at least consider what could be replaced and i think bosri's lieutenant is at the top of the list but um honestly he's such a good card too like this deck is already good by itself but it's gonna get so many upgrades like it's gonna be nuts um i i, I honestly think kaldheim is just buffering a lot of decks so and i think mono white is one of those decks it's it's gonna get even better which is kind of crazy to think about Okay, right, i like this hand Turn two, Daxos, turn three, small Skyclaves, Sentinel's Eyes even. So it's not the best hand, but it's certainly not the worst. Like that we've got a Fabled Passage turn one. I only, I try not to play too many Fabled Passage in um, decks that are very low curve because I treat Fabled Passage as it being good on turn one and turn four. So those are for the new viewers. Any other viewer will know that that's how my philosophy is okay we drew the selfless savior a little late but that's all right you can actually uh selfless savior and then sentinel's eyes on the daxos so there is that going for us um but he is hovering so that means oh okay that's actually fine Ooh, double scorpion okay so i'm actually then gonna go with the selfless savior sent uh actually yeah I'm going to go with the selfless savior play to try and pr give protection to Daxos. And we get a 3-5 going with Vigilance. Pretty hard to answer, honestly. So I feel pretty good about that. There's a loud car outside my apartment, so excuse the... Or is it a motorcycle? I think it's a motorcycle. It's definitely a motorcycle. Let me give him indestructible. So we're looking okay. Looking okay. We got a Welsh Rider here. No problem. It's a great target for 
uh, Skyclave apparition here. So that's what we're gonna do. And I do want to hit the Roast Rider because the Roast Rider has the escape mechanic. Um, and I just really don't want to uh, get bombarded with um, escape mechanics if I can avoid it. So, All right, we have a Priest here. Very interesting choice. Not something I see too often. All right, so we have a lot of... Uh, we have our board set up, but um, kind of Daxos is our winning key piece here. And what I like about this is Vigilance for a Strike, flying very hard to beat. Okay, no problem. I don't mind that at all. So we got like some cute interactions going on with the uh, Marauding Blight Pleased, but uh, nothing to freak out about. Puppet Jace is going nuts over here. Hoping to draw... A boss Uh, that's not too bad because uh, we have someone who has a lot of power on the board right now. So, uh, looks like he could die though, but we have enough mana to re-equip, which um, kind of works out in our favor. Oh wow, we got three scorpions. This, this could be a little painful, not gonna lie. This could be a little painful, but he can't jump block because he doesn't have um, a good blocker. So I'm actually just gonna take the one here. It's actually much better for me to take the one. I actually end up losing a lot more if I uh, start blocking, so that's okay. We're doing more damage back. That's the more important thing. And now we can gain life with Daxos um, with the Cast and Arden Veil. So while we are getting a little flooded here, it's okay. And uh, I hope everyone's doing all right. Uh, guys, it snowed, and I live in, like, the Los Angeles Malibu area. It was so bizarre seeing snow. I gotta say, it was just the strangest thing in the world. Just You just don't see that all that often, you know? All right, so he's gonna sack. Okay, interesting that he used the um, food. I'm not sure why he did that. So we're going to take three here, which is really two, because we are going to gain a life with the Daxos. So we're still ahead. Um, I'm not too worried. Not sure why. Okay, I guess he wants to save up mana for the food instead of a blocker, which is fine. But we can honestly, like, jump block. Oh, this is super good. Alright, I really like where this is going. Okay, so... Now, where do I want to put the counter? Well, we have enough mana to re-equip the Maul of the Skyclaves if we lose the Daxos. So, I'm okay with this. Um, and we have enough mana for Sentinel's Eye, so we'll, we'll still be okay. So, he does, decides to go for the life. Makes sense. He still hasn't really found an answer. Okay, scrying one. He hasn't found his answer. It's nice to know. And we're good. Yeah, we're just gonna put the pressure on him. Like he he's he's the one still on the back end. We can chump block here. Honestly, the one ones are now chump blockers. Alright, so he has a chump blocker now. That's fine. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Alright, no worries there. You can attack with the Roast Rider, yes. Okay. So, that's what we'll do. Just jump block. Alright. Ah, uh, we're... We're not, like, super behind by any means, so... Alright, so here, we'll go here, we'll go here, um, we'll go here, we'll go here, exile, uh, let's exile these two just in case, 
Just thinking that if he has like things that utilize creatures in the graveyard, we don't want to give that to him. All right, let's put it on. Well, these guys can block pretty decently, so we'll just put it on. Again, we'll just put the pressure on. He's running out of um, things to use, so. Okay, gains life. Sure. Not a problem. Okay. Um, that's okay with me. We're definitely on the clock, but it's not the end of the world. And we will start to gain life with Daxos. So I think if we can survive this turn and... Oh my gosh, he drew his fourth scorpion. Okay, I might have spoken too soon. He drew all four scorpions, so that was very unfortunate. So that might be the game for us, if anything. That that was the deciding factor, honestly. Drawing four scorpions in a row. That was honestly the deciding factor. It's pretty gnarly. It's pretty gnarly to think about. But, uh... It's not over yet. He gave us... He gave us some time. I'm just gonna keep putting the pressure on. Yep. Makes sense. No. Okay. Alright, you're being real cute and annoying. Alright. Alright, what's next? Alright, we're still looking okay, surprisingly. We're not out of this yet. Okay, yep, that's fine. You're really putting us on the clock, huh? We're still okay, though. I'm not too worried. We have a very good chance of ensuring that Okay, he's attacking with those two. Very interesting. Not sure why he would do that, to be quite honest. This is close. This is close. That fourth scorpion is honestly the saving grace here, because we're at two life, so. And I don't play Heliod in this deck, so. Okay. All right. All right. Hmm. So if I swing all out, he still gains the life. Okay. Yeah, we just have to continue just applying pressure here. I think we're okay. We might have just, you know, saved ourselves. Okay, I will go ahead and do this. So it's very close. And just for a good measure, we'll play the Hollow Blade, who is also a great aggressor. And he doesn't have a flying blocker as far as I know, so did we just survive? I think we did. I think we just got there. I think we just got there. It's very close. Whew, that made me nervous, though. Yeah, the Vigilance with um, the small Skyclaves combo, super, super good. Very, very hard to beat. So, got lucky there. Whew, this was a close match, though. I think he's trying to time me out, which is all right. Um, no, I think he's still trying to figure out math. Um, okay, decides to go with the food play. Makes sense. Eats the food. Makes sense. Okay, we still have it on board as far as I know. You can attack, that doesn't do anything. Alright, um, just for good measure, I think he's saying good game as well. Just for good measure, I just, it, I always just 
you know, I just sometimes I forget things and something happens and I go like I lost because I didn't think about that one thing. So whew, very, very close game there. Drew all four scorpions to really push our life total, but we managed to get that victory. So let's get in for one more. That was a much longer game than I anticipated, uh, but I do want to show you guys the kind of meta decks that we will be facing at least in some form or another. Mono Black is definitely here to say they're getting a lot of good cards. Uh, they have the Death Touch God. They have the God of Fright. Uh, there's just, they got a lot of good things going for them. So, um, oh, I like this hand a lot, actually. Got removal. We got a guy who can punch in, potentially. So, um, I do think that the Lava Brink Venture is a card to go, though. Okay, so I think this is cycling. So... We have to really start putting the pressure on. Luckily, we have double Skyclave Apparition to um, kind of remove certain threats. Um, all right, so it says Borrow Cycling. Okay, not a problem. All right, we drew three lands in a row. That's cool. So I am going to play the Skyclave Apparition. Um, this will start pinging us for too much, and once he gets the uh, four mana of cycling deal damage to our face for all the cycling cards in our graveyard, can't think of the name for whatever reason, we're going to lose too quickly, so just, let's just not have that. Oh, jeez, but this also makes chump blockers, so um, we are actually going to get rid of the guy who makes chump blockers. Because honestly, we just we just can't deal with that. Because then we don't really have a good way out. So that's fine. I don't mind if he gains life. It does slow us down a tad bit, but it's not the worst. Oh, okay. So he has something to play. Okay. All right, uh, he's got three in there. It's okay. He's hovering over the apparition, which is the problem. All right, we got Daxos here. Actually, I might play the Daxos. It might be a way for us to gain some life here. But I want to see what he does first. Okay. Besides, it's not worth the trade, so. I think I actually play the Daxos just for the life gain, just to kind of buffer our life total. And Daxos can also swing in, which is nice. So, kind of works out in our favor. Just kind of have to ensure that we are not getting hosed too fast. So, 15, not too bad. He does play the Zenith Flare. Okay, that's, I'm actually okay with that because... Um, it means that we don't have one coming to the face. Like, I'm 100% okay with that. I think that worked out much better in our favor, so. Um, could play another Apparition here. Let's play this guy, though. I mean, this is guaranteed uh, damage. And I'm going to swing in here. If he wants to block, that's fine. Figured he would it. Okay, I'm actually okay with this. Because now we have a guy who's going to go in for sure. I I think Loris is the only odd number uh, creature that they play. So that was pretty nice. Um, I'm not really sure if he just forgot how this card worked. Yeah, it has protection. I... I don't know if he just forgot or he's just trying to put things into the graveyard. Um, here we can definitely sack. So he's used two of his Zenith flares. That's, I feel like that's really good for us, if anything. Um, is it just creatures? Nope, it's just Eve. Wow, it's a lot better than I thought. Holy moly. Uh, you know what? Let's just, let's just go ham. Let's just, we're all in, baby. We are all in. Yeah. <laughs> this is the craziest Lava Brink adventure I've ever seen. It's got, I think it's got protection from basically his entire deck. 
And it now has first strike and vigilance just in case something else I'm not seeing. So I think we got this in the bag. We're going to just be another like probably I would I would categorize this as like a B meta deck. Ah, oh, he does get rid of the Mauclave. Darn it. That is unfortunate, but vigilance is still good here. That's fine. Oh, that's perfect. And I'm actually going to get rid of that with Skyclave Apparition. So that, oh my gosh, another one? This is actually really good for us. So let's get rid of you. I'm actually going to put it on the Daxos. That way we get two attackers and two blockers permanently. So you can't block the adventure. Boom! All right, so we beat like two tier b decks that's pretty good that's a good sign for this deck honestly maybe the lava bring adventure is here to stay maybe i was wrong that did really good against boro so uh boro cycling so that was that was awesome so uh if you guys like that please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already give it a thumbs up hit that alarm bell we are going to continue we're going to finish off week three i'm going to try teamer giants i don't really know if that's a thing it's just you know including the beanstalk giant with ramp um but it might be a thing so you know check that out that's going to be coming soon um definitely going to play mono green one of my favorite archetypes looking really strong once again so uh yeah just you know consider you know sticking around help me get to those uh, 200 subs for my birthday present that'd be dope but thank you all so much for watching up top right now you are seeing a video of my most recent upload and then right below that is a video that youtube thinks you specifically will like so go ahead and check out those videos thank you all so much for watching i'll see you for your next nerd fill